Initially, and up to today, man faced oppression from nature. That was the original problem of man, oppression from nature. By the floods, by the drought, diseases, etc. It is therefore this change in science and technology that is always the primer. This word primer, we use it in the army to mean uh, a, provo a provocator, initial provocator. You can call it the initiator. The primer of social economic transformation. However, along the way, another operation to man added itself. The original problem of man was oppression by nature. But along the way, another form of oppression added itself. That was oppression of man by fellow men. What is the form of this oppression? It is in the form of the wars of aggression to kunyaga, kunyaga in our language means to, to loot, to, to kunyaga capture and capture women, enslave, make bahuku, slaves, displace people, ethnic cleansing, colonize, or simply dominate indirectly even if one does not physically occupy the other person's territory, i.e. neo-colonialism and semi-colonialism. Why oppress? It is because of greed. So this concept of representative government, the British brought it to us and we liked it and, and expanded it. Separation of powers, Mutually beneficial economic interactions, trading together. So therefore, although we re resisted uh, the, the nonsense of imperialism, which we think is a backward practice, satanic, St. Paul calls it pagan, When we defeated colonialism, we said, no, but some good things have come from these people. Let's keep them and let's stay together now as equal people, no longer as colonized and colonizer, but as, 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 as brothers and sisters. This is what the, how the Commonwealth comes. Hence, the Commonwealth. What was problematic? could be converted into something beneficial. Those interactions between the colonizer and the colonized, although negative for most of the time, had also their positive sides that should be built on for mutual benefit. The problem, however, is the persistent philosophical, ideological, strategic shallowness and chauvinism of so many actors this philosophical, ideological, and strategic uh, shallowness ignores the progress of the human race in attaining the natural phenomena, phenomena that harm man and life and tending in nature to improve the quality of human livelihood. The invention of fire one and a half million years ago, the invention of iron, the invention of agriculture for crops and for then for livestock, the steam engine, electricity, the railway, the automobiles, the aircraft, automation of, of factories, vaccines, AI and artificial intelligence, ETC, have shown that the quality of life of man can be improved greatly and exponentially by those human innov innovations irrespective of the social systems they live under. Instead of, of, instead of using this human progress for the benefit of all, some actors, out of greed and philosophical, ideological, and strategic shallowness, miscalculate and seek to monopolize knowledge and also use knowledge to oppress others. Example, the iron tools were used for oppression. The gunpowder, 
the aircraft, the nuclear weapons, the rockets, etc., were used for the sale. The greed is a miscalculation. Because if you try to use knowledge to oppress others, they, they also strive to acquire knowledge to catch up with you and defeat you. This is why empires collapsed. All of them without exception. There's no empire which has ever survived. You can recount all of them because they are essentially evil. Empires are evil. By 1994, the last European controlled country in Africa, South Africa, had been liberated by the gunpowder of the Africans. <laughs> so Africans are not acquired gunpowder to chase the, 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 the invaders. Let us concentrate on utilizing the progress of man in the struggle against the operation of man by nature, rather than using that progress in science and technology for parasitism. Let us expand our ideas of chauvinism, chauvinism of identity, religion, tribes, race, class, social class. If you want freedom, if you value freedom, then you should value the freedom of everybody. If you value independence, if you value dignity, then you must, you must respect the dignity of everybody. Stop manipulations and lectures to the society that are different from yours. If you think you are right, influence people by example. If you think you are right, influence people by example. In the, book, in the book of Matthew, you know, you know here, you will take Christianity a bit seriously. So we, 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 we believe in the, the... In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. You do good things. Then the people will see that what you, what you believe is good and they will, they, will, they will copy you voluntarily. Why fight ideas? They are beneficial. Adam Smith helped us by clarifying the ideas of the free market in his book, The Source of the Wealth of Nations of 1776. All these ideas about society, especially wealth creation, add something, although they may overlook something else. We, the calm and greedy and development-minded people, have benefited from all these different and sometimes contradictory ideas. That is how we have been able to turn a very bad situation in Uganda into a positive one. I commend this, this approach to the Commonwealth. And it is my honor to declare what? Open? To declare open the, the conference. Thank you very much. Yes, Hosting this conference in Kampala is indeed a remarkable milestone in the legislative history of Uganda and in the 11th Parliament of Parliament of Uganda. To promote knowledge and understanding of parliamentary democracy in the various forms and develop parliamentary institutions. Your Excellency and distinguished guests, the 27th CISPOC in Kampala is therefore in furtherance of the aforementioned objectives which are in line with the Commonwealth values of democracy human rights, international peace and security, tolerance, separation of powers, and rule of law. 